Hello everyone, welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff. And in today's video, we will be discussing another type of payment distress that is disintegration. So this is a part four of the broad topic type of uh, distress in the flexible payment. And before this, we have discussed the different type of distress that can happen in the flexible payment. Uh, in the part one, we have discussed about the surface defect. And there we have discussed in detail about the fatty surface defect, uh, smooth surface defect, staking, and the hungry surface defect that can happen in the flexible payment uh, surface course. In the part two, we have discussed in detail about the variety of cracks that can uh, happen in the flexible payment. We have discussed about airline crack, alligator cracking, longitudinal cracking, edge cracking, and transverse cracking, and refractive crackings. Then the part three was about the deformation that can happen in the flexible payment. And there we have discussed in detail about uh, rutting deformation, corrugation, showing, shallow dispersion, settlement, and upheaval. So uh, all these we have discussed in, part, in the respective parts, part one, part two, and part three. So if you haven't watched the previous videos uh, regarding uh, all these uh, kind of effects, then you can watch it once you are done with this video. Uh, all the videos are independent from each other, but they cover the holistic topic of the distress that can happen in the flexible payment. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the disintegration that uh, can have the variety of disintegration that, that can happen in the flexible payment. So disintegration, uh, basically, uh, you see, uh, disintegration is uh, the kind of defect that happens in the flexible payment that if such kind of uh, defects are not rectified they will result in the total failure of the payment okay so these are very very uh, in terms of severity level like very dangerous if we want to say these are very dangerous kind of defect that happens in the flexible payments and these are if they are not checked right at the starting of such kind of defect, eventually it will lead, lead to the payment failure. Okay, so uh, in this, let's start with the, the first kind of uh, uh, defect the, that can happen in the flexible payment, the first kind of uh, disintegration defect that can happen in the flexible payment, and that is the stripping. Now, stripping is a kind of defect that happens uh, in the flexible payment where uh, the binder the bitumen strips off from the aggregate surface so uh, we all know that the surface courses uh, of the flexible payment or the bitumen course of the flexible payment is a mixture of aggregate and binder uh, aggregate again being the combination of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate or different uh, particle size and then bitumen is used as a binding agent now we all know that uh, the worst enemy of uh, bitumen is water and if our uh, uh, bitumen surface is uh, exposed to stagnant water for a prolonged period of time then what will happen is that this uh, the aggregate the aggregate that had the bitumen coating over it and if this this uh, is exposed to too much water then the binder will start to strip off from the aggregate surface and as and when the binder strips off from the aggregate surface so definitely there is nothing to bond the mix together as you can see in the image here we have a uniform distribution of binder throughout the surface of the aggregate but due to any reason if this binder comes out strips off from the surface then now there is nothing that is holding the aggregate together so what will happen is down the line if this uh, if uh, due to any reason this process starts to happen then one by one one by one all the aggregate uh, particles will start to come out from the from the mix okay so uh, this is a uh, this stripping defect is a defect that is characterized by the separation of bitumen film from the surface of aggregate particles due to presence of moisture what we have discussed just now and because of which uh, this may lead to the loss of bond between bitumen and aggregate and eventually it will lead to loss of cohesion in the mix the aggregate particles start to come out <clears throat> now this uh, stripping uh, phenomena can either be localized that is uh, in a in a carriageway it may be uh, uh, it may confine to only one section of the payment or it it can cover the entire carriageway Okay, so it can be either localized or can extend through the, throughout the 
eligible depending upon the uh, case. So what are the uh, reasons for the stripping behavior? We have hydrophilic aggregate, the aggregate that absorbs moisture that attracts water uh, molecules towards it. And if we are having too much hydrophilic aggregate, then definitely this uh, aggregate will attract water molecule. That aggregate is coated with coat, this aggregate is coated with bitumen. And as and when there is a, a introduction of moisture, the bitumen will strip off from the aggregate surface, leading to only aggregate. And because of the lack of binding, now the aggregate particle will come out from the from the overall mix as the vehicle moves. It will exert pressure and then we will have the aggregate coming out of the pavement surface. Then the second uh, reason could be the inadequate mix composition. This means either we are having too much uh, coarse aggregate or too much fine aggregate. Whatever may be the scenario, we are not for, we are not following the proper job mix formula, and because of which, because of the inadequate mix, in because of too much coarse aggregate or too much fine aggregate, too less coarse aggregate, too less fine aggregate, or in, uh, not having the optimum binder content in the mix. Whatever be the uh, reason, because of the inadequate mix composition. It leads to the stripping behavior. Continuous contact of water with the coated aggregate is an is a major 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 cause of the of the stripping. This is like the one of the prominent cause of the stripping behavior to happen. Then uh, another reason can be initial overheating of the binder or the aggregate or the board. This means that uh, when uh, when the uh, mix was being prepared at the field, then the bitumen was overheated. Okay. Too much, too much heating of the bitumen was done. Because of too much heating, definitely the bond, the uh, binder gets burned. The the molecules that uh, form the cohesive bonds are destroyed because of which now the binder that you are using uh, that you have overheated, and if you are using that binder, that binder now do not possess that bonding property. Okay, and because of which, uh, definitely if the uh, uh, the uh, stripping from uh, may occur. Now, if you are overheating the aggregate, <clears throat> then again it, it is a it causes the same scenario. Uh, or it, it then another reason can be underheating of uh, underheating and overheating of the uh, of the aggregates. This leads to this uh, point number two that is inadequate uh, laying of organic composition. Another reason can be presence of dust or moisture on the aggregate surface when it comes in contact with the bitumen. Uh, what will happen if the aggregate has certain amount of moisture or dust? If if there is a moisture, then definitely uh, uh, that uh, moisture uh, that is there in the aggregate and over that if if the bitumen is coated, then uh, basically bitumen is in contact with the water and which will instigate the stripping phenomena. If this aggregate has dust over it, then uh, if this is the aggregate surface and over this aggregate surface, we have the dust particle. Now, if binder is coated over the surface, then definitely what will happen is proper contact between the aggregate surface, proper contact between the aggregate surface and binder will not happen. Okay, because binder will now be coated, binder will now be coated over the dust particle and there will not be a 100% contact between the binder between the binder and the aggregate which will down the line as in when uh, this such kind of uh, uh, course when exposed to traffic uh, the uh, moving vehicle will apply certain pressure and then eventually with the stripping phenomena will happen occurrence of rain and dust storm immediately after laying of the bituminous course can uh, can be another cause of stepping phenomena. Higher concentration of salt in the soil and the rainwater is one of the factors that causes stripping. Use of improper grade of bitumen. Uh, uh, this means that if in a place you, you have to use VG40 and you are using VG10, then definitely uh, that binder is not appropriate for that, uh, that scenario, that condition. And therefore, because of the use of inappropriate binder, you will, you will see the stripping behavior. Aging of the bitumen leading to the embrittlement of the binder film. Aging of the bitumen means uh, this can happen because of the overheating. Uh, aging means that uh, basically the fresh, the virgin bitumen uh, that you are using has a good uh, bonding between aggregate and 
the bitumen itself uh, so a proper bond is being formed but aged means that down the line this uh, uh, the bonding property is going to deteriorate and uh, because of which this stripping can happen but what you have done is you have mismanaged the binder you have overheated the binder or you have used uh, if you are using a, some kind of new recycled technique that is you are using wrap material then um, you are you have not done proper calculation you have not done the quality control and because of which this age vitamin is is somewhat brittle in nature and which will eventually uh, as the as such kind of mix that contains the age binder when it is exposed to the prevailing traffic condition then stripping phenomena will take place okay so these are a few of the causes because of which the stripping can take place but these are minor scenarios these uh, uh, these are what we call situation specific and uh, are less likely to occur like uh, when you are going for the construction until unless you are not slacking you will not use improper grade of bitumen the main reason i am again repeating the main reason is the too much exposure of water to the coated aggregate this is the most uh, uh, frequent uh, cause of uh, stripping behavior in in the pavement okay then comes your uh, inadequate mix then this hyperbolic aggregates and have a have a uh, sorry hydrophilic aggregates and other things comes uh, next okay but this point number 3 is like the main reason okay now if you pavement is being subjected to stripping behavior then what to do so see if uh, this stripping is happening in case of surface dressing then hot hot coarse sand heated to 150 degrees celsius can be spread over the affected area and uh, whatever aggregate that has been lost uh, that hot coarse sand is used as a replacement and uh, one thing that need to be noted is if you are using this hot core sand temperature is very important and as soon as you are putting this hot core sand over the affected area it has to be rolled immediately it has to be rolled immediately so that it seals the bitumen right and if aggregates are only partially wiped off a, a, a liquid seal may be used uh, for as a solution for other cases the existing bituminous mix should be removed and a fresh one should be laid okay like what happens is let's say you have this carriageway only portion of the carriageway is being affected by this stripping action then this uh, you can uh, these uh, points you can use for for treatment but if your whole of the carriageway is being affected by this stripping phenomena then basically you have to mill off mill off whole of the surface cores uh, that is being affected and then you have to uh, layer new layer over it okay uh, and if uh, like you are removing the affected layer and then you are laying a new layer and suppose this area is being subjected to uh, too much uh, what you call uh, rainfall then uh, use of entry stripping agent is advisable so that uh, this extra water that is being uh, that the surface course is taking uh, like because of the entry stripping this uh, can uh, this excess rainfall can be managed then regenerating sealant slurry seals micro surfacing can be used to treat this stripping surface next uh, uh, kind of uh, disintegration defect is what we call as the raveling and raveling is defined as the progressive separation and disassociation of fine aggregate particles and binders from the bitumen surface uh, so uh, one by one one by one one by one reason can be any we are going to discuss the reasons so one by one the fine particles starts to come out from the bituminous uh, course like the surface course the fine particles starts to come out you can see here like lot of fine uh, collection of fine particles is there okay and as and when these fine particles are now coming out from the surface cores so definitely certain voids will be there because a bituminous mix is a mixture of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate right these are let's say your coarse aggregate the fine aggregates come uh, provides the compactness so as and when these fine aggregates are now removed these fine aggregates are now removed then what will happen you will have a you will have 
simply the voids of the voids in between the core segregate so once the fines comes out next is your core segregates after the fine aggregate next that will come out is your core segregate okay so the, these are uh, definitely definitely is a uh, like 100% uh, scenario that will happen that uh, once the fines are being removed then the course will also be removed talking about the location uh, now again the, it can be concentrated to a certain section of the carriageway or it can occur throughout the length and width of the carriageway okay so raveling is the removal of fine particles followed by the removal of coarse particles uh, from the surface coarse or the from the bituminous mix that is what we call as the uh, raveling process okay now uh, you may confuse that uh, uh, that is it similar to stripping no why because in stripping there is a complete removal of the layer of bitumen from the surface of the aggregate while here there is a removal of fine particles followed by the coarse particles so basically aggregate particles are coming out right the bitumen coating might be there but the aggregate particles are coming out okay what is the cause uh, so first of all let's discuss about the severity level and uh, now this can be low severe medium severe and high severity level the low severity level is when some loss of fines is associated with the initial stage of binder, binder bearing out very minor losses very minor patches of fine particle you see few fine particles are coming out uh, in terms of uh, the medium severity level is when loose particle exist with some loss of binder wearing out from the rough surface so from along with the fine particle the concentration of fine particles increases it contains some binder film also and uh, high cod is when surface is too rough with the loss of aggregate so along with the fines you have the coarse side like you can see here you can see here this will come out in, come in uh, like a medium severity level followed by the that is going towards the high severity level you can see like the particles of uh, fine as well as coarse particles are coming out from the from the pavement surface right mind it like you can see here that the film of bitumen is well coated over the surface okay so stripping is not taking place but raveling is happening here okay you can see there is a proper coating of bitumen uh, over the uh, all the coarse and fine uh, aggregates but the whole material is basically coming out okay now what could be the cause causes are similar to that of stripping okay the causes are similar to that of stripping uh, apart from uh, two or three uh, causes mostly the cause will be same uh, inadequate uh, bitumen content overheating that is aging inadequate compaction during construction stripping of bitumen basically stripping is an instigating process so uh, what will happen is like if the uh, uh, you you what you see is that you have an aggregate particle and in that partial stripping starts to take place okay so we have the full uh, like instead of full coating now the stripping has start to just started okay uh, now what will happen is you can see in this portion like there is no binder coating so definitely in this section what will happen there is no bonding between aggregate of this uh, this phase with the aggregate of this there is no binder that will be coating uh, that will be binding together these two these two neighboring aggregate okay so what will happen is and then let's say the same process happens for this aggregate also we have the partial coating now so what will happen is as and when the moving vehicle will apply the load through the tire so this this surface will start to break because it's now the weakest weakest contact area and this aggregate will come out right both the aggregates will come out so there is a coating of bitumen over the aggregate surface but because of the stripping because of the initiation of the stripping the bond between or the joint the binding between both the aggregate has loosened up and because of the moving traffic the load that is applied by the moving traffic this weaker contact has now lead to the raveling phenomena okay so stripping is the initiation process for the raveling process to take place now uh, construction during cold and uh, wet weather again too much exposure to uh, moisture is the reason use of inferior quality aggregate prone to fracture crushing uh, opening of a new phase so if you are using too much too much uh, let's say elongated and flaky aggregate so so and 
though there is a proper coating of bitumen over these surface over the surface there is a proper coating of aggregate uh, sorry proper coating of binder okay but because uh, having too much concentration of either elongated aggregate too much concentration of flaky aggregate so the as and when this uh, this mix is exp uh, this surface course is exposed to moving traffic then breaking from here as well as breaking from different section will take place now this broken surface this broken surface do not have any binder coating there is no binder coating here and which will eventually lead to a weakening in of overall uh, bituminous mix and thus because of lack of any binding agent this will come out from the from the pavement okay as and when the vehicle moves they will come out with the uh, shear force that is being uh, created by the moving binder okay <clears throat> then we have use of absor absorptive aggregate like the aggregate is very porous in nature weak in nature then it happens excessive aging of the binder again aging of the binder is the same phenomena lack of pro performance related contract specification this means lack of quality control improper filler to bitumen ratio high in intensity hydrostatic pressure due to combined effect of traffic and weather this means that uh, there's too much traffic and to, because of this uh, excessive increase in the traffic, the breaking of aggregate is taking place. Breaking of aggregate will lead to exposure of non-binding surface, which will eventually lead to railing phenomena. Development of incl inclement weather, that is moisture freezing immediate after con uh, construction. So you have casted the road in a normal sunny day and immediately it started to rain. So the binder has uh, didn't got the time to uh, get to its maximum bonding strength. Right, and because of which the uh, definitely as in, then the moisture will ingress into the mix, and which will lead to the rebuilding process. Traffic stress exceed uh, breaking strength of the mix, and now too much traffic again leads to the this rebuilding phenomena. Okay, so more or less apart from three four points, uh, the reasons are same as that of stripping, and those reasons that we have discussed in stripping are applicable to all the disintegration effects. Now, how to treat? How to treat? Uh, so first of all, the, we have to understand that there are three CVT level: low CVT level, medium CVT level, and the high CVT level of railing. The low CVT level may be corrected by application of fox seal, sand seal, uh, seal coat, slurry seal, or microsurfacing. Like you can see in the image here, the, the uh, railing process is confined only to a portion of the carriageway, and you can see the instigation of of the railing phenomena. In fact, like here we have this cemented course here. That's why the, this uh, railing, uh, this defect has now been only confined to the surface only. If it would have been a, a non bituminous course, then because of this exposed surface, the rainwater uh, may may have been stagnant here, right? And we have seen unbound material, so definitely it will lead to further instigation of problems. Okay, and because of this. Uh, uh, stored water the neighboring area will also be affected first thing is that and uh, second thing is like uh, you can see wherever the railing is it it weakens the neighboring surface if uh, like the local area is now been affected which leads to propagation of cracks and and whatnot and this will basically lead to propagation of more failure okay if the, here only we have we have not checked this area you can see the cracks are being propagated now in all the directions okay so in this area, fox seal, sand seal, seal coat, slurry seal, micro surfacing can be done by removing this part, this whole portion, and then rectifying it. Medium in case of medium CVT level, uh, this may be corrected by application of seal coat, slurry seal, micro surfacing. High CVT level now in high CVT uh, level, depending upon the conditions and uh, depending upon the scenario, basically either you you have to apply multiple coats of seal coat, slurry seal. Or you have to like remove that portion and you have to uh, repair or uh, cast a new material there. The third kind of disintegration that we have is what we call as the potholes. Okay, now potholes are bowl shaped cavities of varying size in a bitumen surface or extending into the binder or the base course uh, caused by the localized disintegration of material location. See, Potholes are the extended version of your raveling. You can see the uh, and stripping in fact, stripping and raveling uh, leads to the formation of potholes. Now, first of all, if you observe here, you will see that the uh, the binder coating is not there in some aggregates here in the neighboring region. You will see 
in this image that the coarse aggregate as well as the fine particles are being removed from the surface and why it is happening we, it is happening because of this stagnant water this water this water is stored now and now in this area once it get weakens it is not checked immediately the traffic will move right the vehicles will move over the surface as the vehicle moves over the surface now the edges are already weak here the edges are already weak so definitely the more and more breakage around the edge will also take place okay so this uh, problem will start to expedite right leading to the failure of almost all the uh, 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 carriageway length and the width okay what what is the cause the most common cause of is the formation of loss of addition of, of in the bitumen wearing coat due to ingress of water into the pavement or due to the higher voids in the surface like the main reason is the stagnant water okay as in when you allow certain moisture like you see there here in this portion there is no uh, like pothole but you can see because of and let's say rainfall or because of uh, any reason there is a layer of thin film of water that is being stored or that is being stayed here right you can see now what happens is you have this water layer that is there over the surface of the binder course and as and when the vehicle moves with a certain speed uh, the tire because of the tire pressure this water will get into the voids of the bitumen mix this this uh, and will lead to stripping effect which will eventually lead to raveling effect and this bowl shape uh, potholes will be formed okay um, so basically the pavement gets softened as a result of loss of cohesion and uh, under the action of traffic so if not attended to in on time uh, and properly not treated then aggregate the surface get progressively loosened as a result of uh, formation of potholes like these edges are now the weakest portion and definitely breaking uh, here will take place okay so lack of proper bond between the bitumen surface and the underlying water bound macadam base layer may also cause the formation of uh, bottle like above this we have the unbound material we have some amount of moisture that is uh, stored now this moisture will ingress into the uh, unbound layer unbound layer that is a mixture of soil and coarse and fine aggregate now this unbound because there is moisture in in the uh, unbound layer soil particles will start to come out and which will lead to the formation of potholes okay now this uh, potholes either can be localized or here or can extend through the length and the width of the carriageway now talking about the severity level sever in terms of sever severity level potholes may be classified as the small medium and large a small pothole is defined as 20 mm deep and 200 mm wide medium pothole is defined as 25 to 50 mm deep and 500 mm wide large potholes are those that are greater than 50 mm deep and 500 mm wide talking about the treatment uh, the rectification consists of filling potholes with open graded or dense graded mix this can be uh, repaired by hot or cold mixes or uh, using cut back bitumen or the emulsions uh, we have this particular codes for the uses some ready made mix or the cold patching mix can be used to repair uh, these uh, potholes now the last type of uh, disintegration that we are going to discuss is the edge breaking now edge breaking uh, we have already discussed in cracks your crack distress we have discussed about the edge breaking uh, or the edge crack they will, we have called it as edge crack uh, here it is called as edge breaking now the difference is that here the propagation of crack the propagation of uh, crack from the edge is very severe that it leads to the total deformation of the pavement okay so when we are discussing about the edge cracking basically it was about that like we can see in the image here here uh, the propagation of edge crack is such that that definitely the pavement has started to fail but the pavement is still at a workable condition okay but if right from the start like what we have discussed at the starting of the dis disintegration that if these are not checked basically it will lead to the premature failure of the pavement itself okay so whatever discussion that we have discussed in the edge uh, cracking are applicable here okay the causes are same the infiltration of water worn out shoulder inadequate strength of the edge lower layer of the pavement being wider than the upper layers too narrow width are the reasons for the uh, edge cracking 
then uh, treatment again uh, remains the same that we have discussed so in detail for uh, if you want to uh, understand this in detail you can uh, you can refer to the part 2 of the video and then uh, what are the treatment treatment uh, the, the first treatment is that the shoulder and the pavement materials in the affected area should be fully removed to a regular section with a vertical side so removal of that affected portion and then um, laying a new material that to ensuring that proper joint is there between the old and the new layer construction of shoulder along the edges so right now we have no lateral support for the flexible pavement if edge cracking is prominent then construction of shoulder so as to provide the lateral support to the pavement surface this need to be done the shoulder should have an adequate slope to drain off the water we do not want the water to slope because that this stagnant water leads to the all, is the main cause of all the problem a slope of 1% steeper than the camber on the bitumen surface should be uh, provided and in order to prevent the edges from getting broken again the maintenance operation should include periodic inspections of the shoulder shoulder condition and replacement of worn out shoulders materials with adequate compaction so if uh, like the proper investigation uh, inspection has to be done like here if you see that the shoulder uh, failure is start to occur the portion need to be removed in sandy areas where the soil is likely to be eroded by wind and rain it may be advantageous to have brick paving at least for some width to protect the edges surface and subsurface drainage uh, wherever deficient should be improved so the thing is that proper inspection need to be there now uh, in the first inspe inspection you have find out that uh, like uh, the edge cracking or the edge breaking has been there what you do you you remove this portion okay you remove this portion and uh, recast uh, fresh material fresh material in this section along with this you provide full length shoulder okay you provide full length shoulder now in case in case uh, you see like this option of providing shoulder is not possible uh, uh, maybe due to budget con constraint or whatever the case may be then in that case uh, once the portion of the material is removed then uh, that portion can now be paved with brick that portion can now be paved paved with bricks okay so this is another method that can be used along with that proper drainage facilities uh, to drain off the excess quantity of water has to be provided okay so this was uh, all about the uh, disintegration effect that can happen in the flexible pavement with this we complete our discussion on the topic uh, distress in the flexible pavement so i hope uh, this lecture was useful to you and uh, if you have been following the previous lecture uh, then uh, do share your views over this uh, topic was the topic understandable or how was the delivery of the lecture uh, were you able to grasp what uh, we wanted to convey to you um, if there is any suggestion or any topic in, on which you want me to prepare the video you can definitely uh, write in the comment section do share your views it will help us to improve the quality of the lectures so that's it for uh, this video uh, thank you for watching have a nice day